Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be telling you a true crime story called Braden Nugent. If I do pronounce any names wrong, I do apologize. It is difficult to understand what motivates a man like Braden Benjamin Nugent. The Thunder Bay, Ontario native had been a known troublemaker throughout his youth. So much so that a local police officer commented that he was a serial killer waiting to happen. Sadly, that prediction turned out to be all too true. Nugent had already accumulated arrests for aggravated assault, robbery, and arson when he eventually graduated to murder on the night of March 31, 1995. On that fateful evening, Nugent had been drinking at a local bar with another youth. The pair had been keeping a close eye on the patrons and had noticed that one produced a fat wallet to pay for his drinks. When 44-year-old Jean Joseph Booten left the bar, Nugent and his cohort followed. The pair kept a safe distance from Booten while he was on the streets, then rapidly closed in on him once he reached the isolated tracks of Hillcrest Park. Nugent demanded Booten's wallet and watch, which the man handed over willingly. His accomplice, however, did not save him from the fury to come. Nugent and his accomplice brutally attacked Booten, beating him until he collapsed to the ground, then kicking and stomping him until he lay still. Then they stripped Booten of his valuables before fleeing the scene. However, they traveled only a few blocks when Nugent instructed his young accomplice to stop. We have to go back, he said, to make sure he's dead. If he lives, he'll be able to identify us. The two thugs then returned to the scene of their crime, where they found Jean Joseph Booten sitting on the ground, wiping blood from his face with a Kleenex. They attacked without warning, raining down blow after blow with their heavy boots. Having rendered Booten unconscious again, they left, only to return a short while later with a length of rope. This they used to tie their victim up. They then took turns jumping on Booten's head and chest, causing massive fractures to the skull and several broken ribs. Their night's work completed. They walked, laughing from the scene. Jean Joseph Booten's battered body was found the following morning by a woman walking her dog. As the horrific details of the crime began to filter through, there was an outpouring of revolution from the community. There was fear too. A killer so vicious was very likely to strike again. They theorized. It took just six weeks for the theory to be a fact. On May 16, 1995, 41-year-old Victor Wilson was standing in the driveway of his home on Ambrose Street when he encountered Nugent. Wilson was mentally impaired and could communicate only by grunts and humming. Perhaps this infuriated Nugent, or perhaps his blood was just up and Wilson was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Whatever the case, he grabbed Wilson by the throat and squeezed until the man lost consciousness. Then he dropped him to the concrete and got to work with his boots kicking and stomping until Victor Wilson's head was reduced to a mess of blood, fractured bone, and brain matter. It took the police six months before they finally honed in on Braden Nugent as the attacker. Brought in for questioning in December, he was unrepentant and offered no explanation for the vicious murders. At his trial, he entered guilty pleas to two charges of second-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. The youth who had been his accomplice in the first murder was tried as a juvenile and got just three years. But the story of Nugent doesn't end there. Nugent was sent to Collins Bay Penitentiary in Kingston, where the first 10 years of his sentence passed without major incident. Then at around 8.35 p.m. on March 27, 2005, a guard on a routine inspection found him lying motionless in his cell. Medical staff were summoned, but they were unable to revive him and he was pronounced dead 25 minutes later. An autopsy would determine that Nugent had died of an overdose of methadone, a narcotic used to ease addicts off heroin. The thing was that Nugent had never been prescribed the drug, not a drug user, although a verdict of suicide was accepted. The possibility exists that Braden Nugent was murdered by one of his fellow inmates. 
If that is the case, we can say that it wasn't poetic justice. Thank you for listening. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking my channel, and I will see you on the next one.